Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the video, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my channel members for their ongoing support. If you would like your name to appear on screen, then you can click on the membership link that will be in the description down below. I have two tiers, one for shout outs and a second tier where you will get weekly members only content. This content will be catch up live streams, members only reactions or sometimes I will do a pre-recorded chatty get ready with me video where I update you on life stuffs. There is also of course the custom emojis and the cute animal badges next to your name. Of course you just watching this video is already much appreciated but if you wish to support the channel further you can do so by subscribing, commenting, liking, sending super thanks and of course joining the membership. And now let's get into the video. Hey guys what's up and welcome back to the channel my name is Ilona I'm also known as Car Transformations I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder and today we are going to be looking at foodie beauties I have barnacles mukbang where she has a lot of choice words about candy and the carnivore diet and uh, I'm not going into this blind I did listen to the YouTube underground yesterday whilst I was getting ready for my night out with my bestie Velika which was awesome however I did get drunk I've had very little sleep so I might be a tad snarky we are also gonna pick three winners three winners for one-to-one -one coaching so let's get into that first and in general, if you want to inquire about one-to-one -one coaching, my email is in the description down below. All right, so I've literally just spent the last five minutes finding a website that works. So I'm going to first do the I Have Barnacles stream, just to show that it works. Um, I'm not a robot. And as you can see here, how much does crap cost in Kuwait? So it works. Now let's get my video here. And let's just go with the word coaching because some people put code like one to one as in what like one to one together with spaces with hyphens so if i just do coaching then that should be enough so let's pick three winners uh same name winners possible in one draw uh no so let's have a look and see who we get drum roll All right, so we have Carla Simon, Jeanette Lee Isabel, and Jenna May Ashley. You guys have, you guys have won one-to-one -one coaching. So what I'm gonna do is I will comment on the video under your comment. I will post in the community tab as well once uh, I've done all of this. Email me. Uh, we will arrange a time slot for check-ins. We I will send you out a form that I want you to fill out so I know what to do and then uh, we'll go from there. So congratulations. Thank you all for everybody for participating and uh, Yeah, I'm excited to work with you guys. So on that note Let's get into what foodie beauty has to say about candy and the carnivore diet and uh, <laughs> In general, who does she think she is? It's very rich of her to sit there and comment on somebody who's actually successfully losing weight and have um, opinions on what diets do and do not work when all she does is eat processed food, which has been highly proven to actually lead to an early death. Uh, but besides that point, let's get into the video. I will put her on one and a half speeds because it's a long video. Hello. <laughs> hello guys hello guys hello guys hello so welcome back to another video all right disclaimer this is an eating on camera video so if you are triggered by eating noises um messy eating uh just people eating in general and fat people eating what they want this is not the video for you so have a nice day <laughs> for those of you remaining thanks for watching and i'm gonna say right now i have a lot to talk about today a lot of my mind you know some days i'm less talkative today i'm talkative and today i have chinese food because bearing you know, in mind i just i Bearing in mind that she's supposed to be on like an eating recovery, a binge eating recovery journey, allegedly. For somebody that's part of a binge eating recovery, intuitive eating, etc. is eating in moderation. She has done nothing but upload enormous 
fast food mukbangs with large volumes of food every single day in addition to the normal food she eats from her diet boxes so yeah i love chinese food i get this craving every once in a while yeah all she does is get cravings every day she has a craving for something craving 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 it's okay to not it's okay to have cravings and to not eat the food that you're craving nothing will happen literally nothing will happen if you don't eat it probably at least once a week at least so of course my cat hello you want some food <laughs> she this place makes the best iced tea the lemon slices um she was her hands are looking so swollen and i don't mean fat because obviously we all know that she's fat but her hands look swollen as in like too much sodium they look very painful sleeping comfortably in her box mountain i know people are like box mountain starting yes well it's a box for my cat you know um i have two boxes right now littered around the place because cats love boxes and every time i find a nice box sorry why are cats so cute that you like feel the need to talk in a weird nonsensical way all right let's open this up so today i'm trying something different here on camera actually i don't want to wear my ring for this because i don't want it to get dirty I have spring rolls, which is a must for me. I mean, spring rolls are good. I am very partial to a good spring roll. And, wow. Wow. I don't know if I can give you any of this, Julia, but uh, I kind of regret ordering this because I feel grossed out. I ordered crab, but crabs remind me of giant spiders. And the legs are freaking me out, but the taste of crab is so good. Uh. I agree with her on that. Crab is tasty. <sighs> I wish I could hire someone to just crack the crab for me and give me the meat. <laughs> Professional crab cracker. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Smells like seafood. No, it smells good. So this is just um, steamed crab with vegetables. I don't have any utensils for crabs. Let me have a sip of this. Bismillah. I mean, aren't you supposed to, uh, those kind of, uh, like, aren't you supposed to, yeah, you are supposed to use utensils because you're supposed to crack them open, right? And then you eat the, the meat out. You have these special little tiny forks, I think, for crab. Let's have a spring roll first. So I want to um, tell you some things about binge eating, okay? Because I get quite a lot i'd say the majority of my comments some of you beezers etc leave nothing but positive loving comments okay and people seem to think that these people are ass kissers they are exactly that so here's the thing i want you to think i want you to just disregard what i'm eating and think of binge eating disorder as not what i'm eating but as a, a mental restriction with food okay let me see if i can give her something I feel like she is using this whole binge eat. I've done. I've, I've got some mosquito bites, and they're really bothering me. She's using this binge eating recovery as just an excuse to sit and eat large volumes of food on camera. Like, do I think she binges sometimes? Yes, but in general, I don't think she has binge eating in that sense. Uh, like, obviously, I'm not diagnosing. I'm not a doctor or a nutritionist or a dietitian. I'm just talking from my personal opinion um, because. She just grossly overeats all the time and part of binge eating and it being a mental problem is the guilt afterwards and I just don't get the impression she ever feels particularly guilty about anything she does. She kind of, I mean obviously she she claims to not film her binges etc but she's very unapologetic about it all the time. Could be facade obviously but at the same time like... I don't know. I just think I just I think she's. I just feel like she's more of a food addict. S still, in my opinion, she's more of a food addict and uh, a glutton. Julia, no sauce. Do you like crabs? Do you like crabs? Do you like crabs? Here's some crabs for you. And then she's complaining later that the, the animals are like the cats on the table. It's like, well, if you keep feeding it on the table, obviously it's going to be there, isn't it? I wonder how he likes crab. Try to save him some. Okay. Can you feed hamsters fish? I mean, like, are they omnivores? Maybe they are. I think we had this conversation before they and then I was like, oh, I thought they were vegetarians. And then people were like, they eat their own babies. And then I was like, yes, they do eat their own babies. So they probably do eat meat or animal product also. Okay. Yeah, as an attitude towards food, basically. Like, there is a lot of mental conditioning. I think that, like, I think diet culture literally conditions people to have eating disorders. Like, for example, all of, all of these comments I see, these people are conditioned as well. Like, saying, you know, this is a reasonable meal, meal to me, okay? It might not, you might think this for... Well, this is, this is the problem that you have, Chantal. You think all of these meals here, everything that you see here in all of these thumbnails, you think this is reasonable. You think these are normal portions. When you got your diet box, which was a real normal portion of food, 
You thought that was small. No, that's a normal portion of food for most normal people. You are, yes, you're mobile obese, so you can eat more. But you're not a bodybuilder or a powerlifter or a man that works on a building site all day long or a waitress that's getting in like 30,000 steps a day that you need to eat more food. You literally sit on your ass all day long. You do not need to eat 5,000 calories in a meal, 3,000 calories, 2,000. Your daily intake can probably be around two and a half to 3,000 calories and you can still lose weight. Granted, she's not about weight loss. She's about recover, health, health recovery. But the food she's consuming is a lot. It's not a normal portion of food at all. For her, it's maybe a small portion because she just eats such enormous... She has such a warped view on what a, a normal portion is. Your rolls are fried. They're not healthy. That's your personal opinion, and you may be... Well, no, no, no. Deep fried food is unhealthy. It's not about opinion. That's fact. That's scientific fact that's been studied. There is data out there. There is... There, it's, it's literally scientifically studied that deep frying food is not healthy for you. So it's not it's not just opinion. It's, it's, it is fact. Right, but it still doesn't exacerbate an eating disorder. What does... And I've learned this. And now you're thinking, oh, you're an expert on eating disorders? Yes, I have an eating disorder. Therefore, I want to become an expert on it so that I can learn from it and I can help. And how and, and how, is, how is that going for you? How is that going so far? Before she starts lecturing people on what they should and shouldn't do, what is and isn't right, maybe she should actually have some success at anything. She is nothing but a failure. Nothing she's ever done, she succeeded at for even a fucking day. So before you become an expert, before you decide to have opinions, before you decide to, not opinions, you can have opinions, but before you decide to share your experiences and lecture people on what's right, what's wrong, maybe have some success. Maybe actually overcome your binge eating disorder or lose some weight or whatever it is before you sit here on a high horse preaching to other people what they should and shouldn't do, what is and isn't right. Because clearly you don't know yourself others and i can cure myself and i can help myself by educating myself on the matter like for example if somebody's diagnosed with cancer it's not uncommon for them to go and seek many um educate themselves and seek out you know information that could that could help them better understand what they're going through so <laughs> it's just it's so fucking crazy isn't it? she's in the middle of like preaching this whole sentence and then she just like has to take a bite it's like i don't know finish what you're saying first just vegetable spring roll Oh, that's, that makes it healthy then, because it's only vegetables, you right? You know, it's, it, 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 this is the science. If you have a salad with lots of sauce on it, or if you have vegetables in the deep fried, it's healthy, because that's how the, that's, that's the science that Chantal goes by. That's something that I've been doing. And I've, you know, something clicked, like, okay. It's about the mental conditioning. So you have to mentally decondition yourself to labeling food as bad. So when you watch me and you say, that food is going to kill you, that food is bad. No, food is food. It's no. It's not evil. It's not good. No. No, you are absolutely 100% wrong. Food is good. Food has, some food is nutritious. Food, some food has nutritional value. Some food has zero nutritional value. Some food is literally bad for you. Some food is literally carcinogenic. Some food will actually kill you. Like, I don't understand what argument she's making here. Like they, like there, there have been, there's documentaries on people that eat nothing but McDonald's and Subway and shit like that for 30 days and they get their blood taken and they, their health markers just go, are completely going through the roof in a, in a bad way. You know, there is science that proves that if you follow a healthy whole foods diet, it's not to say that you can't ever have a spring roll and that you're going to die. No, but again, Chantal, you eat nothing but fucking fast food. Fast food every single day. That kills. Fast food, processed food kills. It's bad for you. It's carcinogenic. It's carcinogenic. It's proven fact. It causes high blood pressure. It causes depression. It causes this, the anxiety. It is bad for you. There is bad food. There is good food. You cannot compare... A sp a, you cannot compare a fucking fried chicken, you cannot compare a McDonald's burger to a broccoli. It's not the same thing. One is healthy, one is not. One is good for you and has nutritional benefits, one doesn't. It's neutral, it's just food. It's how we utilize things, right? It's like blaming the gun for shooting somebody, it's the same thing. She's so fucking dumb sometimes, honestly.
That's like t that's such a fucking non comparison. And restriction and cutting out certain foods. It's not just saying this is bad, I shouldn't eat this, I should just eat some vegetables and some crap. It is restricted and that leads, that perpetuates the binge cycle. So it's okay to restrict. You know what? Sometimes in life you have to implement a thing called self control and willpower. Yes, having a spring roll sometimes isn't bad. To every single day have takeout because you have a craving and eat enormous volumes of food, that's not that's not curing your binge eating disorder. What you're doing here is just giving into an excuse to overeat and eat whatever you want. Nothing happens if you restrict. What they the point of uh, intuitive eating is eating it in moderation. The moderation being having a spring roll, not having three of them. The moderation being having a takeout meal once or twice a week, but making healthy choices for the most, most part. She is using this as an excuse to just sit there and eat fast food every single day. And being like, oh, I can't restrict, I can't restrict. There's nothing wrong with restricting. Nothing will happen to you. It's perpetuating a cycle. A cycle that you're creating in your head. Like, nothing happens if you restrict. Nothing happens if you don't have that one thing that you crave. Trust me, you will survive. You will survive the day not having a craving and it doesn't have to lead to a binge that binge is just in your head because like that binge is just mostly probably also the thing is as well with a lot of binge eating and people that have binge eating disorders they they have these problems because they don't eat nutritional they don't eat food that has nutritional value a lot of people that i have coached that have been obese or that are obese they don't binge as much because of the fact that I give them real food to eat in large volumes. And in moderation, you can implement things like unhealthy foods, processed food. Yes, in moderation. But if you eat real food and you get used to eating real food and you see how it makes you feel and how you just feel physically, mentally, how you perform everything, you're not going to crave the fast food. Because the only reason you're craving fast food is because you're eating it every single day. So I'll post the binge cycle here. So here's the binge restrict cycle. And here on the diagram, you can see restricting is a huge part of it. Eating less than normal and eating only certain types of food. So completely- She never eats less than normal. When, Chantal? When? Well, because she did a water fast for a day once a year. When do you eat less than normal? You always eat for four fucking people. When do you restrict? Never. She never ever restricts. So what binge restrict cycle are you talking about? You don't restrict ever. There is no guilt, there is no shame, it literally is you eating whatever the fuck you want every single day of the week. And using now binge eating disorder as a reason to. We're eliminating uh, foods, even trigger foods. We have to learn to neutralize those trigger foods and reframe the thoughts and uh, let go of those mental restrictions. As you can see, that guilt, that restriction when you overeat, like, okay, I'm not going to eat this anymore at all. No, it doesn't work that way. That causes a binge. And I hate to use this. But why would it... I, I understand the logic behind... I understand the logic behind saying, like, I'm never, ever going to eat this again. That it, like, it, it's, it's not a healthy mindset to have. I get that. But there is a difference between implementing some self-control, having some discipline, and going, like, do you know what? Like, yeah, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to be healthy. And going, like, do you know what? Today... I'm going to try and stay on point and if I'm good then maybe later in the week I'll have something. You don't have to give in to every every urge, every craving you get. It's just so stupid. It's just where um, the, the body positivity, the health at every size, where that movement. Try and make it acceptable to just not have any fucking willpower and just to sit there and overeat. Yeah. Of course part of it is to say never ever do anything again is extreme. But to just give in to every single whim is unnecessary also. This as an example in target. I'm not targeting, I'm not being rude. But it is public, so I'm allowed to, to comment on it. You know, just like you guys say about me, you put it out there, people can comment. Hungry Fat Chick was doing, she has binge eating disorder too. I know exactly what she's going through. I fully support her and I feel like she- Well, do you know, like Hungry Fat Chick actually has had real life problems. You know, Chantal's biggest problems in life is that people have told her no on occasion. She's she doesn't know struggle, whereas Candy has had an awful upbringing. So now you don't know what she's going through. It's not the same. Yeah, maybe in terms of like you're both obese and you're overeating and like, yeah, you're food addicts and binging. But there is a difference. Like Candy is a nice person. 
Candy is a troubled soul and you're just a very selfish, entitled person that basically is a glutton. Like, uh, it's just not comparable. I'm sorry. He's, you know, I understand what she's going through, okay? But what I don't support is the carnivore diet because it's super unreasonable. For, it why? Because you think so. I think it's super unreasonable that you at 400 pounds sit here and eat fucking fast food every single day talking about binge eating and your health, uh, trying to pretend that you're trying to get healthy. And I think I personally cannot comprehend for one second that somebody wants to eat fucking fried food every single day of the week. I think that's super unreasonable. I cannot understand how somebody would want to live like that. I think it's it, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. It's, it's counterproductive to binge eating recovery. Okay. Well, but so far, Candy managed to go pretty much 28 days, almost 28 days without binging. And when she actually failed, she didn't even binge. She covered with it. I reacted to it. I can't remember. She didn't even binge, really. She kind of just went off, off track, basically. She ate some carbs and stuff like that. She, so she broke the carnivore diet, but she didn't binge. The fact that the fact that Chantel has, sits here and has the audacity, the fact that Chantel sits here and has the audacity to comment on Candy, when Candy has was successful for almost thirty days straight, lost a lot of weight, and she has never for one second, not even a fucking day, not one day, has she succeeded at anything, is absolutely ludicrous. Like it's absolutely ridiculous for her to sit here and say like, well, I think it's unreasonable. Why? Because you can't do it. That's a you problem. Just because you think it's unreasonable, I think it's incredibly unreasonable f for you to sit here and eat fast food every single day. But meanwhile, Candy's succeeding and you're failing. But continue. Okay, and that's how I've done that for so many years too. I still struggle every day with that mindset. Okay, I, every time I eat something like this, I immediately think after, oh my gosh, I did so much wrong today, I might as well go binge out. No, I have to like catch my- uh, Does she really do? Or is she just saying that because these are the talking points? And recondition my thinking, you know, getting rid of those food rules saying, it's fine, I had a few spring rolls, I'm not, you know, nothing's gonna happen, I can have them again in the- Yeah, but yeah, okay, fine. But you do this every single day. We are not talking about once a week, twice a week, a blue moon occasion. Every single day is an excuse for you to indulge, for you to act on a craving. It's it's t this is not how it works the future this is not bad food it okay. is bad it is bad food it is unhealthy food and it's okay to say that food is unhealthy because it has no nutrition this is a single portion that i bought um so it's like <sighs> carnivore diet diets like that that are restrictive you cannot with somebody with binge eating you cannot eat, and i think they can cause binge eating but if candy is succeeding who are you to say like just because you think it's going to cause you to binge it doesn't mean that it's going to cause other people to binge she succeeded for almost 30 days straight. Again, Chantal, not even one fucking day you've succeeded at anything in your life. So who are you to talk? Because what happens when so many people fall off? Why? Why do people fall off? Because I have to note here that I'm not picking on anyone. I go through the same cycle over and over as well, especially when I restrict. I mean, restrict with fad diets, fruit-only diets, etc. I'm not saying all diets are bad, but they are counterproductive to healing from binge eating disorder. And have to get back into keto reboot or whatever. You think that eating red meat every day with butter on it is healthy, really? <laughs> like, I, is she really gonna sit here? The queen of highly processed fast food, is she gonna sit here? Do you really think it's healthy to eat fucking takeout every single day, Chantal? To eat deep fried food every single day? First of all, when it comes down to red meat and like butter, etc., and animal products being unhealthy, a lot of that is. Um, perpetuated by like i'm pretty sure like the grain industry like this is why they're like oh yeah carbs are important because back in the 80s calyx did this whole study about like how grains are the best um a lot of studies will also say that like yeah animal products are bad for you because they look at an average american diet a an average american dieter goes to mcdonald's yeah uh, a burger mcdonald's burgers is probably not the best quality meat there is in terms of carnivore diet, I don't think there is any long-term studies out there that, because uh, it's a fairly new thing. So they can't say whether or not it is healthy or not unhealthy. Uh, I, I know it can help some people with autoimmune diseases um, because basically you elim eliminate a lot of inflammatory products, which is 
carbs cause a lot of inflammation and certain vegetables can cause inflammation fiber can cause problems etc so i'm not saying for everybody uh, but for some people there is some reactions and i'm sure that some people have reactions to animal products in terms of keto from what i understand like the long-term studies have shown that it, can, it could be potentially bad for your heart health but at the same time keto is a fairly medical diet it is very really very beneficial for a lot of people that have things like cancer or for people that are diabetic because cancer cells uh feed of carbs basically to some degree so if you have a very unhealthy diet um if you have a very high carb diet especially processed carbs this is probably why i should clarify i believe complex carbs not some but are not as bad but when it's like simple processed carbs um these are inflammatory to the body this is this is why they often recommend a more ketogenic diet same with diabetes that's one of the things that like long term yeah i don't necessarily think it's a good thing to cut out complete food groups long term but at the end of the day if it's helping you lose weight then what difference does it make uh most people don't stick to something like that for the rest of their life uh, some people do but like i said the studies are a bit like inconclusive in terms of like because there isn't nobody has done carnivore for a long time for that long for there to be studies on it but i'm pretty sure that somebody that's eating um only animal products uh is probably going to be healthier than this 400 pound woman that's eating fucking spring rolls and pizza and mcdonald's and fries and uh pancakes that are drenched in chocolate every single day I think that per that person that's eating only meat is probably going to be healthier and have better health markers. Just, I, I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong, but I'm I'm assuming you know it's that's not the case. <laughs> and nothing but that. You want steak? Have it steak, butter, baked potato, broccoli. Why do you need to have a baked potato? <laughs> If if somebody wants to just eat meat meat and vegetables, what's wrong with that? Says like I just I just cannot get over the audacity of her sitting here, t preaching to people how they should eat and shouldn't eat when she literally does nothing but eat some of the food that has been proven over and over and over and over again to cause a variety of health like health problems. This is not this is widely studied yet. She sits here talking about a fucking steak, how it's unhealthy, because there's no potato with it. What's wrong with that? Are you going to tell me a baked potato is going to kill you? No, but you know what is going to kill you, Chantal? All of this fried food you eat every single day. That is actually going to kill you. People demonize carbs because of the sugar. But what about the cholesterol and fat, saturated fat in steak and butter? Yeah, but that's like literally not uh, a lot of that... Uh, it depends on the kind of butter, but animal fats are pretty good for you. And I, for one, I have, uh, I did keto for a long time and low carb. If you, as long as it's healthy fats, as long as it's like healthy animal fats, it lowers your cholesterol. Actually, I had extremely, when I was doing low carb um, and keto, I had extremely low cholesterol health. Like in general, my cholesterol has, is just abnormally low. But you know what does cause high cholesterol, Chantel? deep fried fucking food guaranteed so who are you to sit here and preach about having some butter on your steak when again you're eating cheese you're eating chips you're eating ramen that's all all of those fats are actually proven to be bad for you i don't think cuts of protein lean cuts of protein the fats in those i'm pretty sure that um they're not bad for your health i think that is literally propaganda i could be wrong but I'm, I'm fairly sure that a lot of that is just propaganda. Uh, and a lot of, and when people say that meat is bad for you, it, a lot of it is just down to the general diet of average people. And a lot of people eat uh, meat when it comes in the form of a spaghetti bolognese, not in the form of a grilled steak. I mean, I just... You're omitting a very important part of your diet, okay? Um, you're removing all pleasure from eating yeah but food's not supposed to always be about pleasure you shouldn't eat like food shouldn't be a sexual experience i know it is for her but yeah and sometimes it is nice to eat nice food but you should also eat for function you should eat because you're to nourish your body you should eat things not because it's like only because it's tasty like you can make healthy food taste good too like i like eating healthy food but you should eat food because it's good for you and carbs yes carbs are important but they are the only uh, they, they are the only macronutrient that is non-essential protein is essential fats are essential carbs 
whilst the body prefers it for an energy source and like yes the brain does prefer like the brain do, does need some carbohydrates for function your body can live without carbohydrates you really can't live properly without fats or protein I mean to some degree you can and then I'm sure she'll go like oh vegans this but like let's be real when you get like the hardcore vegans um, the really hardcore raw vegans that are fruitarian and stuff like that a lot of them don't look healthy at all like they look really malnourished and kind of they age a lot as well so fats especially fats are very important to hormone regulation healthy fats protein is necessary for recovery in the body so no carbs are not necessary you're just a carb addict there's a difference <laughs> you know maybe girl i gave you enough crabs i mean you know so that's my point with that um your point with that is just because it's something that you won't do and you can't do because you have zero willpower and zero determination, you think it's inappropriate. It clearly has worked for Candy. She lost like 30 pounds, 40 pounds, something like that. Managed to stick to something for almost 28 days. But, okay, go off. Go off and tell people what they should and shouldn't do. Mr. Miss, uh, miss, uh, like, queen of success here. Man, that's good. <laughs> and they put so much ice as if they know me or something. All right, let's try this crab before I well, They here. probably do. You probably order from there, like, at least at least once a week. That's what she's saying. At least once a week, could get a craving for uh, Chinese food. So more, she probably orders on a regular basis. So, yeah, they probably know your order by now. Draw more. Okay, let's see. What's in here? Do you eat these little legs or what? Mm. I love crab, oh my gosh. But I'm kind of sad because I saw a chef cut one up alive. Mm. And I felt really bad for the crab. Mm. Even just the shell has so much flavor. Have a few veggies here. So anyway. Yesterday's mukbang, for example. I ate until I was full. I had three fajitas. <laughs> A normal portion of food, yeah? Three fucking fajitas. That's not normal, Chantal. You eat until you're full, yes. But this is the problem. This is why you can't intuitively eat. Because intuitively, you overeat. Intuitively, you eat for four people. Because you have overeaten so much in your life. You eat so much processed food. You don't understand your natural hunger cues. Your hunger signaling, your hormones are completely fucked up. You eat so much crap that your blood sugar is all over the place all of the time. So... You don't, you cannot do intuitive eating and do things in moderation. This is why somebody like you would benefit from following something like a meal plan where they give you portion sizes so you understand what a portion of food is. And then, yeah, you'll get hungry, but you know what? It's okay. It's okay to be hungry sometimes. It's okay to have a craving and not eat food. This is how you progress. This is how you also rewire your thinking, rewire your brain. Doing things that make you feel uncomfortable over and over and over again. This is how you become stronger. This is how you uh, create, uh, this is how you develop your willpower. And this is how you also overcome your mental problems. Just because you have a craving, that doesn't mean you have to eat 10 of the things. Ah, oh, man. She's so frustrated sometimes. Mmm, that's so tasty. I have three fajitas. And some chips. I didn't even finish the chips. So, how? But the thing is, she's omitting that that's not the only thing she ate in a whole day. That's a lot of food for one person in one sitting. How is that? How is that too much? You know? See, the, like, she literally, the thing is, she literally doesn't even understand that she's overeating. For her, she genuinely think that what, thinks that what she eats are normal portions of food. She really just believes that this is normal. Because she does not feel super full or super stuffed. She, she doesn't understand that the volume of food she eats is abnormal. It is excess. It's kind of it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Like it's it's interesting for somebody like me <laughs> to sit here 
and watch somebody like her tell me that what she eats is normal when she has no idea what a normal portion size is. Like, she'll look at a portion of rice that has like, she'll have a kilo of rice in front of her and that's like, that, that to her is a normal portion. No, no, a normal portion of rice is like around 150 grams to 200 grams of cooked rice. That's a normal portion of rice for most people. A normal portion of chicken is the same, all right? Like, a, a normal portion of protein is around 150 to 200 grams, like cooked meat. That's normal. <laughs> like, uh, it's just fucking mind-boggling, isn't it? <laughs> the only thing about crab is it's a pain in the ass. You know what to eat. <laughs> you have to say, I'm going to allow myself to eat this. Why? How do I eat this thing? What the Why? is this? What, what will happen if you don't? You're gonna binge, but why? You're only gonna binge because you feel like, like, I feel like that is just a mindset in itself. <sighs> oh my God, I feel like I'm repeating myself. And I am, I haven't had enough coffee or enough sleep for this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you love crabs, huh, baby? <laughs> so I would freak out. Uh, are you supposed to do that with crab? With your teeth like that? Here. I want to eat cream crab. I guess when I go back to America for a visit. Mm. Anyway, so that's it. I'm gonna keep eating what I want. Some days I'm hungrier than others. <laughs> that's normal. Yeah, happens. So I just want to say I've been watching some weird videos, <laughs> some interesting videos, and. Look, I get a lot of hate for everything I do. Yeah, because you are... <laughs> Every, everything you say and do is usually wrong. This is why. You're not a nice person. You're, you're neglectful of your animals. You talk out of your ass a lot. And yeah, you know, you can't take criticism. <laughs> I'm caught. Baby girl, no. Come on. I'm highly controversial in everything I do. Especially what I eat. Everything, everything. So. And this is because you decide to become a weight loss channel, to then sit here and do mukbangs, and then to preach about what other people should and shouldn't do with their health journeys when they are successful and you failed at everything you've ever done. You do extremes, you'll do a water fast, you listen to mediums, you'll go on a fruit diet, you'll go and buy 10 kilos worth of vegetables and then you eat takeout every single day. Like, this is why, this is why you, you preach, you wanna, you want to be a healthy weight loss success, but at the same time, you don't do anything for it whatsoever to try and lose weight. Yeah, you know, you're trying to work, the argument will be, I'm trying to uh, cure my binge eating disorder. But you're not even doing that. You just you're literally just using she's just using binge eating as an excuse to overeat, and give in to her cravings. That being said, one of the big controversies as controversies as well is filming in public. I've learned a lot about that. So I'm not too sure. Uh, I'm going to listen. No, I mean if you're going into a public office. So oh, I, I'm going to skip through a lot of this about her talking about filming in public because I, d I don't really have a lot to say about it there's certain laws in writing Kuwait apparently she's talking about like first amendments and shit um it's irrelevant man she really loves okay come on they usually get in trouble but they educate the people like i'm allowed to be here too you know all right i'm going to stop the video here for the simple reason that i've been filming for a long time I really need some more coffee. She's mostly just talking about filming in public and like regulations, etc., etc., etc. If you wanna watch her video, then I'll obviously that's linked down below, and I'll link Yaba's live stream from yesterday as well. So if you wanna see it through a reactor, then like go and go and check out her live stream. Um, she she will cover through all of that. She will cover all of that as well. I just really wanted to talk about the the her her thoughts and opinions. 
on uh, binge eating and restriction and she just does she she uses the right talking points for binge eating recovery and like intuitive eating but she doesn't implement any of it part of it is prioritizing whole foods part of it is eating healthy part of it is eating food in moderation binge eating recovery doesn't mean that you can just sit there and eat whatever you want because you otherwise you're restricting there's nothing wrong with restricting there's you don't have to say i'm never going to eat something again but you also don't have to eat all of it all the time every single day there's an in-between right there's a happy medium so and I'm obviously like what I do with my bodybuilding preparations. This is also very unhealthy. I'm not, I'm never going to sit here and say that it isn't like the foods that I eat is unhealthy. The foods that I eat is healthy, but long term, the diet that I have probably is unhealthy also if I, cause there isn't a lot of variety in it, but I do what I need to do because I'm an athlete and I think anybody of any sport, if you're an athlete it is unhealthy because it's an extreme anything in an extreme is unhealthy so but just because i do that for myself because i'm an athlete and i want to achieve certain things um that doesn't mean that i'm like that all the time or all year round i i don't because i know it is unhealthy i know it messes up my hormones and i'm not in denial about that so on that note i'm gonna go because i need a pee i need to edit this i need a coffee and I have a lot of work to do and yes best get going so thanks a lot for watching congratulations again to the winners um insert crab emojis comment like subscribe dislike the video if you disliked it let me know down below why i'll try and see if i can edit a vlog for today if not they'll go up tomorrow i will definitely go live on the weekend for a reaction to april i'll do that on f sunday and on Sunday we will on and and on Sunday I'll do the pre-live live with the members. So I'm gonna go now. Have a good weekend, guys. Take care. Bye bye.